thanks for being here today. Um, we will talk today about, as um, Margaret was saying, um, about cybersecurity and about, you know, model engineers, actually, in cybersecurity from both, both perspectives, what threat actors are doing today and the defense strategies as well, right? So let's start by um, giving a brief introduction to top cyber threats. First, we have this malware, which spreads across, you know, companies, corporate network, encrypting uh, customer data and rendering system inoperable. When encrypting information, the attackers ask in order to decrypt information, or they go even further. They first make a copy of that data, threatening the victims by exposing that data in the internet if they don't pay. So this year, um, there has been a, a near constant stream of ransomware attacks across all the industries. It's not a matter of financial industry, but it's, you know, every single in industry is um, uh, willing or uh, ready, you know, to be attacked by these type of things. So lately due to um, its extreme profitability for bad actors, actually ransomware remains like the most popular threat type for this year. And also, you know, threat actors have capitalized on the COVID-19 pandemic and, and the new uh, work from home configuration ramping up ransomware operations throughout the whole year. Then we have the phishing. So this type of poisoned emails, right? That a victim receive under presumably uh, interesting topic with a link to a malicious site or uh, a, post, a poison document attached in the email. So prior to the pandemic, credential theft and phishing were at the heart of more than 67 of the breaches that um, which was increased during the pandemic. Then we have uh, this type of what we call the distributed denial of service attacks, which have been steadily increasing also in frequency over the past years. And for example, in Q2 last year, we saw a roughly 50% increase compared to 2020, 2019. So the average attacks last 24% longer and the maximum attack length has jumped by less than to this. 264%, which shows us, us certainly how impactful this type of attacks can be for an organization. And then we have, you know, the classic, I would say, insider threat where we have these two main sources. We have the negligence, so people that really don't have intention by, by mistake or errors um, that they commit, they can, you know, make a, a bigger breach. And we have the malicious intent. It is interesting that in 1990, sorry, in 1920, negligent insiders are the most common, common and account for 62% of all the incidents, where malicious insiders were on, only responsible for the 14%. So clearly we have to do a very uh, thoughtful process in terms to prepare our employees right, in order to avoid this type of negligence. And last but not least, we have data breaches. So in general, passwords and email addresses are still the most exposed data and financial incentives are still the leading cause of this type of breaches. In all these, you know, type of incidents, threat actors often took advantage of common vulnerabilities affecting internet-facing devices, compromised or leaked information on publicly available data resources, poor email configuration, which allowed you know, for spoofing and phishing, and legitimately uh, uh, registered domains with um, witnesses, okay? So that's basically what we are facing up when we talk about uh, top threats um, um, activities. 
but we have COVID. So since the COVID-19 outbreak uh, began, the number of cyber attacks have soared. So hackers have uh, exploited a greater number of weekly protected factors into corporate systems, as well as, you know, utilized the, the human destruction caused by the COVID-19 related events to compromise personal devices. So today, to give you an example, the FBI is receiving 3,000 to 4,000 cybersecurity complaints daily, up from 1,000 prior to the pandemic. So, and in terms of phishing, as I mentioned before, prior to the pandemic, the credential theft and the phishing were at the heart of more than 67% of the breaches. It has since found that uh, phishing remains the number one issue during the pandemic. Today, or during the pandemic, basically, users are three times more likely to click on a phishing link and then enter their credentials than they were pre-COVID because of you know all this expansion about this, the, the, the faster, the complication, the, the huge situation about everyone working from home with a lot of people you know surrounding you. So they are more distracted and it's easier, easier, easier for the people to, to click on links that are you know poisoned. So phishing will remain the top attack vector throughout 2021, with rises expecting across traditional phishing and also vishing, which is the, the way that they do it by you know calling you, or what we call also the smishing with uh, SMS, you know, text messages. So it's not only by email, you know, you have to be careful about everything, every type of message that you are received from unknown sources or unknown people. And, and also all this situation about COVID made companies to jump into remote working abruptly. So this was also an advantage for these bad actors, right? Poor technological uh, infrastructure and inadequate cyber and, and data security are <laughs> hindering the productivity of the employees working from home and represent a cyber risk to businesses. I would say uh, an estimated of 25% of all employees have noticed an increase in fraudulent email and spam and also phishing attempts in their corporate email since the beginning of the COVID crisis. <laughs> And then we have all these, you know, bring, bring your own de de device that maybe before the COVID was, you know, not very common, that it was completely expanded. So while the majority of organizations allow the use of employee-owned devices in the workspace in some way, many employees use today their personal device at work regardless of any type of company's policies related to bring your own device. And, and due to this, you know, abruptly transition to a remote working environment, cyber criminals have increased their attacks on remote login services. So they are taking advantage of this, you know, abrupt, abruptly uh, rise of remote login, so they're taking advantage of any type of vulnerability or misconfiguration related to this in order to take advantage and gain the access to the company. So there were over 1.2 million attempts made to compromise remote login services, with the majority of these attacks being executed through brute force. That means, you know, trying and trying and trying until they get the correct a password, right? So all this context about the variety of, of threats plus this increase of the exposure due to COVID pandemic gets even much more complex when we talk about the emerging technologies. So, um, let me change there. Okay, 
So emerging technology is also leveraged and targeted by bad actors, creating a new risks and new challenges for the organizations in general. Here, I try to sum up, you know, uh, uh, a list of these emerging technologies and talk a little bit about the new challenges that we are facing with this. The first one is, of course, the public cloud. Everyone is talking about, you know, uh, speeding up and, 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 and making a lot of improvements by putting their information in the public, in, in the public cloud. But also, this, ex this gives a, 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 an exposure to increased risk through, for example, misconfiguration, resulting at the end of the day in data confidentiality, uh, integrity, or even availability risks. And then we have these, you know, uh, you, you have may may have heard about this, uh, the use of deep fake, where you can create, you know, someone that is looks like you, but it's not you talking exactly like you. So these these type of techniques, um, convincing, you know, simulation of people based on audio, on video evidences, on which they are uh, trained a, a machine to conduct what we call the social engineering attacks. So if I can simulate with this type of technique, I don't know, the CIO or the company calling me, for sure I will I will do whatever they are asking for, right? And this is actually what, what we, we call the social engineering attacks. And then we have um, the software supply chain. So product complexity increases the risk that defects um, vulnerability and malicious code will be inserted into software products, making companies very vulnerable uh, when implementing updates on those infected software. So now these actors, instead of directly trying to attack your software or your uh, infrastructure, they go through your vendors and they try to poison their software. So when you implement or, or when you, you know, uh, implement the software by those vendors, you get attacked without noticing. <laughs> and then we have the Internet of Things also allows, you know, potential exposures such as privacy invasion, uh, large scale botnets and physical damage, especially at home where we don't have, you know, a conscious process of protecting our home devices. <laughs> And then we have these quantum computers that are so terrific, powerful computers where experts today are predicting that these quantum computers, while evolve, continuing to evolve, could crack encryptions that currently help protect critical information, right? So today we have very strong encryption algorithms where we encrypt our confidential information, and then we will have these powerful computers that we will be able to crack them in, 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 in a matter of one day, you know, or hours. So that will expose really everything that is protected through those type of encryption algorithms. And lastly, uh, with the use of artificial intelligence, hackers will target data sets used to train model and, and poison them. Uh, this is to say, for example, modifying malicious code to appear safe and trusted. So with all these type of technology, these, these are um, the way that they, they will evolve and continue, you know, uh, pushing us into a more challenging environment. So it is important to mention that actually bad actors, as I said, use a variety of tactics, techniques and procedures to infiltrate their victims' network. This can, that can cause damage to bottom line and reputations of people, businesses and government around the world. So the best way to defend against these attacks is knowing where they take place and what tools are needed to stop them before it's too late. The global uh, business expansion uh, and growing regulatory demands require new technology solutions and continue industry-wide effort, efforts. And adopting you know, emerging technology also help business to be more competitive and agile in a digital area. So we should work to allow the business 
to enable this technology securely. It is important to monitor landscape by identifying external threats, monitoring uh, emerging threats, and defining the risk appetite with very clear thresh thresholds to be constantly monitored. Also, it is key to evaluate emerging solutions aligned to risks and business-driven priorities and define fast-track proof of concept before deploying these technologies. We definitely need to ensure prescriptive engagement guidelines, policies and standards to be followed and a clear framework to assess third-party uh, risks, ensuring control alignment and secure architecture. Finally, it is necessary to deploy at scale or targeted to risk and integrate each point solution with risk management framework and closely monitoring. The idea is to identify the attacks, stop them, learn from them, to enhance and improve the defense for them. Continued you know, investment in cybersecurity is required to keep pace with the variety and complexity of threats, business, and regulatory drivers. Um, okay, finally, so this is uh, how we think, you know, technology at JP Morgan. Uh, in, in cybersecurity, JP Morgan invests $600 annually on its uh, enterprise-wide strategy for cyber defense. This strategy is this designed to protect the bank's most critical information assets and accelerates business and technology opportunities. On focus is, um, our focus is established on protecting business critical information at every single level and define a, different, a differential uh, protection for critical information assets. We define an adaptive um, security and, and controls tailored to global business, regulatory and threat environments. We also promote business awareness and preparedness through robust training and simulations. And we have in place proactive cyber operations that are risk-based and intelligence-led. In terms of artificial intelligence, we, were, we are working on AI power solutions that automate billing and make it easier for clients to move money around the world. We are also using machine learning to personalize the digital ex, uh, experience on JP Morgan Market's global research. And we continue on the exploration and development of blockchain solutions such as JP Morgan Coin that deliver value to clients. Then, uh, finally, I would say, we have 50,000 technologies who are working in our company with a big collaboration with high profile startups. This is the reason why we have our CIO, CEO, uh, Jamie Diamond says that we are now a technology company which provides financial services. <laughs> 